Joining me now to discuss it is Stephen Pavlik. He is partner and head of policy at Mac Renaissance Macro Research. Uh, how'd you like that intro, Steve? Good grief. Um, but when things look the worst, that's often the best time to invest. Bonds, bonds were not worthless, but not far off it for decades. Is there finally some value in, in government debt? I think so. I mean, just comparatively speaking, the stock market's performing poorly right now, and we have the Fed committed to interest rate hikes. So I think moving forward, yeah, I mean, it used to be there is no alternative. Now we're seeing an alternative emerging here with respect to bonds. Where do we invest? If our, if our viewers are scared, they're nervous, $31 trillion, looming possible recession, stock market, one of its worst years ever, like, you know what? I'm just going to put my money in government debt or any other kind of debt and just ride it out. Where should they do it? I'm thinking from a geopolitical standpoint, we have a lot of hotspots popping up around the world. So I think aerospace and defense is probably, in terms of the sector, one of the safer places to invest. And then from the dollar, you know, clearly that's strengthening around the world as well, too. And I think people should be mindful of that when looking at the currency situation. Okay. I want to talk more about government debt, though, Stephen. So, you know, listen, mm -hmm. politicians, and by the way, both parties, it, it, both parties like to spend because when you spend... You, you tend to get votes and you can smile on camera and say we're doing this. What they don't tell you is that that comes with a bill. The money is not free. And that ultimately you got to pay tax on much of that debt, which means you're actually going to it's going to cost you far more than you initially talked about unless you make subsequent cuts on the other side. How severe of a GDP hit could we take if our servicing costs on national debt rise above where they are now, which I think is about six hundred billion a year just on interest. Right. The Committee for a Responsible Federal Budget just came out with a report earlier this month that suggested that number is going to climb to $700 billion. The other thing to keep in mind, too, with some of the tax estimates provided by Democrats, they're sort of assuming that much of the activity that they're taxing isn't going to change. I'm not sure that's a fair assumption. Usually, if you want to discourage something, you tax it. So my guess is some of the tax revenue moving forward will come in much lower than projected, which is going to make it harder to pay this off. Yeah, how does this how does this play out, Steve? I mean, that, that's the question. I mean, do rates stay high for years? I actually literally just got a tweet from or a text from a friend of mine saying, I, I want to buy a house. Where are rates going? I, I have no idea. Where, where do you could they fall next year if we go into recession? Or are they going to climb for years? I think that's something that the Fed needs to consider when they're thinking about the midterm impact. If you're going to have a divided Congress with Republicans likely to take control of at least the House and possibly the Senate, you're not going to have any fiscal stimulus to rely on when we get to a recession. Now, if we were to maintain the status quo, that could be interesting. We think about what's going on in England right now, because you could have a Democratic Congress looking to provide additional fiscal stimulus. And what's that going to mean for the Fed's effort to fight inflation and interest rates moving forward? Stephen Pavlik, we appreciate your time today. An important discussion because $31 trillion, I don't know about you, but in my book, $31 trillion is a lot of money. Just say it was, 15, it was 15 trillion like 20 years ago.